Hello everyone, my name is Alejandro. I am with 3JS Ambassador and I will be your teacher in this section talking about ENS. If you are a developer and you want to use ENS in your project, in your, in your service, in your backend, uh, stay here because we are learning about how to implement it and how to instantiate it in our project. Uh, okay, stay here, uh, let's start. At the beginning, if we want to start uh, to create this project, the idea is we have to uh, read the documentation. For the reason, we have to look for web3js.org. When we are in the web page, in the official web page, we have to open the docs. This is the documentation. And here, we have to search the specifically library that I need to use. In that case, I want to use web3 ENS module. When we are in web3 ENS module, we have to look for the specific thing that we want. In that case, I have I want to start. I have to use it in my project, but I want to start to do it. Okay, this it tells me that okay, I have to install this library, but I have two ways. This is the first way. The first way I have to install Web3, and I can set uh, everything with Web3. But in that case, I have the I have to install every information, a lot of things about it. For example, if I install Web3, I can instantiate the smart contracts. I can call different function about the smart contract. I can do it anything that I can use with Web3, but if my project, uh, use I need the specific thing focusing ENS, I know that I don't need anything from other smart contracts, use I need to call a specific function for ENS, I don't have to install uh, all the package about Web3. I can install the specific package focusing Web3 ENS because this is the information that I need. Use I need with ENS for the reason I don't have to install anything. I have to install just a specific thing that I need. And this is the example that I can use in my project. This is the first way that I have to, to take. Okay, uh, other thing that I have to, to understand is this example is focusing TypeScript. But uh, in my case, I like a lot to, to test the code at the beginning using JavaScript before implementing it in, in the TypeScript project in my bucket. For the reason I don't want to use it at the beginning in TypeScript, for the reason I have to use JavaScript, I have to do a, a little modification to use it in JavaScript, but it's very simple. Okay, let's start to code it. For the reason I have to open Visual Studio Code because I want to, to type the code. One thing that I like to use is, uh, okay, I can open the folders, and this is the folder that I want to use. I have to create a folder in that case, and this is focusing ENS. I can call ENS and I can move from here to here. When I will be here, I can open the terminal and I have to open, I uh, have to initialize the project uh, called npn init. Uh, I, it requires me the name of the project. Uh, I, I say ENS, okay, uh, continue, continue, enter, 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 enter. Uh, and it create me a package.json. The package.json is the first file that I need to use, I need to have if I want to create a project specifically for JavaScript of our TypeScript project, okay? Uh, with this file, I have to install the other library. What is the library? This is the library. It's specifically using Web3 it ENS. I have to copy it. I have to paste and enter. Uh, next, when the library will be installed, I have to create a specifically file for JavaScript. I can create, I can call index.js. And here in this file, file, I have to implement my code. Okay, this is the code that I can use. I have to copy and okay, I can paste. paste. Uh, okay, this is the library. The library is with three it ENS. This is the instantiate of this library. And it's saying, okay, if you want to use ENS, you have to make sure that you, uh, what do you want? Okay, in that case, for example, the registry address is the address for registry contract from ENS, but the registry smart contract uh, it depends if you, if you want to use the ENS that is deployed right now in mainnet. We have to call uh, this specifically, and we know that at the beginning it has this address by default. And if I want to use the ENS that is in mainnet, I don't have to send anything because it has the address for default. The address by default is this address. This is the address for mainnet. The second parameter that I have to send is the RPC. The RPC is the specifically endpoint that uh, give me the possibility to interact with this blockchain because my computer is, is my computer, it is in my house, it is with me, but this computer is, doesn't connect with the, with the blockchain with around the, the nodes 
for the reason I have to connect my computer and my product with a specifically node and a specifically blockchain. For the reason I have to send my code an endpoint in order to interact uh, from my computer, from my code to a computer that is connected with the blockchain. Okay? With this in mind, I have to have an RPC. How I can find an RPC? One thing that I like to use is, okay, I can open Shinelist, Shinelist.org, and this is a web page in order to connect me with different uh, RPCs from different blockchain. I can open this tab and I can see, okay, the score, the privacy. Okay, I can see, I can see it. It showed me a good score and a good privacy. I can open it, I can copy it. And when, after I, I can paste it here. ENS, I have an instantiate of ENS. With this, I can call any method that I can find here in this example. Uh, no, I have to instantiate it, but I, we have to understand anything. This is a file. This is, it isn't a specifically function. For the reason I have to create a specifically function that could be a sync. For example, const init is a sync function. And this async function uh, call those methods, those those variables and those those things that I need to use. Why? Because uh, it is a wait. I have to, it have to I, I, this method and this sentence have to be inside of async function. For the reason, I have to be it here inside of async function. Okay. Uh, this is the RPC. This is the instance. The first thing is the address, but uh, I want to use the address by default for the reason I sent undefined. Next is the RPC. This is the RPC for Ethereum mainnet because I am using the specifically blockchain of mainnet and the specific contract that is deployed in mainnet. Okay. Uh, I want I can get the address. I can modify this lock in order to say, for example, uh, get address. This is the information about get address. And it returned me this information. Okay. I can call it uh, init and with this when I call this file, this file the file call init and the file init uh, call every sentence. Um, I can do it because I don't have any more code before or after init for this and I don't have to, to write await. I can call it here. Uh, okay, if I want to call it I can I have to use node index dot yes. It say me okay import. This is the first problem. What is the problem? This file is 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 modified or is is ready to use in TypeScript, but I am using JavaScript for the reason I have to change it in order to have a specific sentence that can be used in JavaScript. Uh, for JavaScript, I have to change import for const, and I have to replace from for require require. And at the end, I have to uh, to save it here. Okay, I replace from for const. Uh, I replace uh, import for const and from for require. When we have this sentence, we can use this code in JavaScript. I can call again, and it shows us the get address. Okay, the get address is this sentence. This information show me the information about the the address owner of this. Okay, the address that has this specifically ENS. Uh, for the owner and for other information, we can call different methods that we can find here. For example, uh, get content hash. We can copy it and we can paste it uh, after. But we can see. We can call it using Web3. But in that case, I don't have uh, installed Web3 in my project. I just have installed ENS because how I said you. Uh, with, when I install ENS, I have used a specifically project about ENS and I don't have a lot of project or a lot of method that I don't want to use because I want to test specifically ENS. For the reason I can I have an instantiate of ENS in the variable ENS. I can delete this part and I can use use ENS. Okay, uh, I can I can use it or I can call for example a hash or content hash. And I can close it and call the function, call the file. It saved me. Okay, this is the address and this is the content hash. The content hash for this specifically address is, is nothing. It doesn't have anything safe for this project. Okay, 
What other thing I can call? I can call the specifically owner. I can know what is the owner of this specifically ENS. I can copy it. I can paste it. And I can replace, remember, uh, we have to delete this part. And we can uh, add at, at the beginning a specifically comment in order to know what, what I am, am seeing, you know. And I have to save and call again. It saved me, okay. This is the address and this is the owner of this of this CNS because the owner is the person that you know that buy the that bought, that have bought the specifically ENS. But other thing that we have to know is this part, the resolver. The resolver part is curious because you can buy an ENS, you can have the ENS, but you can assign the ENS to other address. For example, I can be the owner of my address. But I the my, for my ENS, but I can say okay, I am the owner of this ENS, but I want that I want if you send money, if you send or you interact with this specifically ENS, the information and the data, the the money, the crypto that you are you sending to to this specifically ENS doesn't send, doesn't send to me. I want that the information and the crypto have to send to all their specifically address that I can set. This is the resolver. The resolver is the address that receives the crypto when anyone sends the crypto to specifically ENS. I can be the owner, but I can be a different person to receive the crypto. The person that receives the crypto can be all their address different to me. I am the owner, but the receiver, the resolver is all their address. For the reason, uh, I can have a, in that case ENS, ENS get resolver, and we can see that the resolver could be all their person. Okay, uh, resolver. It could be older or it could be the same person. In that case, when we call this function about the resolver, we can see that the resolver is all the different address. The owner is this address, but the resolver is it. If you send money to Ethereum.it, this address is the address that receive that will that will receive the crypto when you send the the crypto to specifically ENS. Okay. Other thing that we can find is the pop key. Uh, we can call uh, using ENS get pop key. Other thing is the uh, the TTL. The TTL is focused on specifically things about the about the the server uh, because we can use our ENS as a, a specifically domain and we can deploy web pages here and we can set different things about TTL and we can save other things that as record access and other things that we want. For example, we can see it. Uh, with it, we can tap uh, ENS, you know, result, result, and we can call again, and we can see that this has a specifically record, this wallet has to be used. For the reason, uh, this, those are the functions and the, the methodology that I can know when I call the specifically library, and this is the idea. The idea is we have to decide about what we want to use. If we want to use a lot of functionality about Wii 3, we can call, uh, we can install Wii 3 JS at the beginning in order to use every sentence or every function that I want. But if I want to use a specifically library for a specifically function, for example, in that case about ENS, we can call, a, we can install this library and we can call a, from this way, instantiate the ENS and call it a specific thing that I need for for ENS. Um, yeah, this is the those are the things that you can use. Um, remember, if you are using in that case, my my case, I am using JavaScript. You have to change the way to instance to, to instantiate this information of this library and to import this library in my project. And if I am using TypeScript, I can use other way. But the idea is the same. We have to instance, we have to, we have to call, we have to import, and we have to instantiate the specifically ENS, sending first the information about the what is the contract, what is the contract address. But in that case, I can to use the contract address by default for this one I send undefined. And the same com parameter is the RPC. The RPC can be fine in Chainlist if, I, if it's, it's a public uh, RPC. But if I want to have a specifically and dedicate a, a, a RPC, I can use, for example, uh, Alchemy, uh, Quick Note, or other web, uh, web page that give us a specifically private RPC for our project. Uh, this is an example for the reason I use a uh, specifically public 
Public RPC. And you are invited to follow us in social media, Web3.js, in Twitter, and you are invited to join us to the Discord. If you have any question, uh, let me know and uh, ask, ask us about those questions that you have. Uh, yeah, you are invited to continue learning and see you later in a next video about other things about Web3.js and other things that we can implement. Bye bye.